In this video we will be talking about how to integrate a device based on a Voto information model with MQTT and Python. In order to do that we have a few requirements we have to fulfill. Of course we have to have a Bosch IT Suite account in place together with a booked asset communication package subscription. And this asset communication package is a convenient way to book the things and the hub service in combination and automatically create a bridge, the connection between those two services if I switch over to my web browser, you can see that I already have an instance of this Bosch IoT Suite asset communication package in place and the state is active. Jumping back to the requirements we have to fulfill, we can see that we either have to have Python, Java or Arduino in place and installed on our system in order to do the integration for our device. Of course, I already have Python installed in my system so I can show you how to integrate your device with Python and MQTT in this case. The last thing that is necessary is to have a device provisioned in the Bosch IoT suite. And this means that we already have to have a digital twin of the device we want to integrate in Bosch IoT Things. Switching over to the Swagger UI of the Bosch IoT Things service, we can see that I already have a thing in place that is called com.bosch.water.tutorials, which is my namespace, colon recipe zero. And we've created this in another video here. In here we can see all the features we des described for this device, CPU temperature, location, and of course the battery status. Switching back to the slides, we can see that we have fulfilled all the requirements and we can now go in and start integrating our device with Python. To give you a basic understanding about how our device looks like and what features and capability it has, we will be using this Raspberry Pi 3 model with the onboard CPU temperature sensor, so this will be our temperature, and we can connect the GPS module for the location and the Pi Top battery for the battery status. In this short video, we will only integrate the temperature sensor reading from our onboard CPU temperature. So the basic steps we have to take here is generate and download the Python source code for the Raspberry Pi model. This again will be done using the Bosch IoT Suite official plugin, which will display us all the integration scripts we can generate, the device provisioning and the dashboard. Once we've done that, we can then go in and configure our device with the credentials we have to pass in order to connect to the Bosch IT hub. After that, we can read the sensor data and populate our object model. You will see this in a second here. And after we finalized our integration, our configuration, we can then go in and send our sensor data to IoT Hub and read it out again later on using the Swagger UI. What I'm going to do now is switch over to the Voto repository here. In our case, we want to use this Raspberry Pi tutorial information model here. If we click on that, we can see quite a few information about our model and uh, Voto DSL in here as well. What we want to focus on is the Bosch IoT Suite official plugin. And in here we can see this integrate device with Python section. And in here we just download the source code, which will download it to our downloads folder. Switching over to my downloads folder, we can see this org folder here. And this is already unzipped, so you will see a zip file. If you unzip it, you will get a requirements file, a Raspberry Pi tutorial app.py and model. And what we want to take care about is this Raspberry Pi tutorial app here. If we open this with some code editor, I will be using Visual Studio Code here. I assume that you're a little bit familiar with Python if you want to do the integration with Python. So what we have here is a few variables. We have some functions in here we don't have to care about too much. And there's one method that is called periodic action. And this will be executed every X seconds. And the number of seconds you have to wait until the next execution can be edited here in time period. We will start with this device configuration on the top of the page. In order to get all that information, what I will do is I will switch over to my Bosch Asset Communication subscription and to the IoT Things API. The first ID we will need is this tenant ID and we can find this in the show credentials section of our Bosch Asset Communication. It will be down here below the hub. So I will just copy and paste this instead of add tenant here. Second one will be a device password. And in here, what we want to do is we want to use the password we set when we provisioned our device before. In my case, this was Borto demo. We don't have to change anything about the adapter. The device ID will be visible in the Swagger UI of Bosch ID things. So going back to the API, I can see thing ID here. And the thing ID is exactly what I will paste in the device ID part. The client ID is not to be changed. 
auth ID will be the same as the device ID, but we have to exchange the colon for an underscore, and the topic in our case will be again the device ID, but instead of a colon, we want to use a slash forward slash here. Now there's only one part left, which is this certificate path here. And what we want to do is go back to our asset communication subscription again. And in this show credential section, we have this SSL certificate here. What I will do is I will select the whole path to it and I will do a right click and save it to my downloads folder. Switch over to my downloads folder again. Here you can see the certificate. And what I will do is I will just paste it into this folder here on the root level. We can now reference this in here as dot slash IoT hub dot cert. And we're done with the whole configuration part already. Next up is the integration of our sensor data. So I will go down to this periodic action section. And in here we can see the information model dot location, information model dot battery, information model dot CPU temperature. In our case, we want to take care about the CPU temperature here. And what I will do now is I will go to the Voto Eclipse repository on GitHub and go to the docs and tutorials page. And here we can find the written tutorial for this MQTT Python integration. If we scroll down on this page, we can actually find a short code stub that will ease up the way we read out the CPU temperature. And I will just go in and copy and paste this definition of get CPU temperature in here. And I will just paste this here and save the file. What we can now do is just get this get CPU temperature and instead of the current version zero, we will just paste the function call in here. And what this will do is it will trigger the reading of that file descriptor that is bound to the CPU sensors, the CPU temperature sensor, and gets the temperature and returns it and replaces it in here. What we can also do is just for now, we should integrate this, but for now we will just do fixed values here. We can just do like 63.7 and 31. Dot something, I don't know, dot 4. Just to give it an upper and lower bounce, our animation for the widget, the UI widget will work later on without any problems. And that's basically already it. I switched over to my terminal now and in here I can do ls, which will list the files that are currently in the working directory. So we have this Raspberry Pi tutorial app, we have the IT hub certificate and the requirements file to install the requirements now. This is the step we have to take before we actually run our application because we have some external requirements to fulfill. I can do pip install dash r requirements. After we successfully install the requirements, we can then do Python and then the Raspberry Pi tutorial app.py. And if we hit execute here, we can see it's connecting to client. The publishing to topic logging will appear to telemetry data. And here we can already see that it's reading out some data. So here we have 50 decrease for now. Now it's 52.9. And our min and max measure values are also set because we did it hard coded for now. In order to check if our data is actually inside of Bosch IT things, what we can do now is go back to our IT things API, the Swagger UI. And here we can see we still have the old data, but we haven't refreshed this request now. So what I will do is I will scroll up a little bit and hit the execute button again. One thing we have to make sure is that we have authorized ourselves using the authorize feature up here. And once we've done that, we can then click the execute button and actually get the newest data. Once our request finished, we can scroll down and now we can see the information, the sensor data in here. If you have followed all the steps correctly, then you should see some data in here. However, if you still don't see data, what you can do is go to your asset communication subscription page, go to the dashboard of your asset communication subscription and under connections, under the connections tab, you will see your connection here. And if it's not working, this should indicate you some, some error, some warning. What you can do then is just close the connection and reopen it again and then try again. And in a lot of cases that will solve your problem. All right, let's quickly recap what we did in this video. We used one of the water information models for our Raspberry Pi to generate some Python code stuff that uses MQTT in order to connect to Bosch IoT Hub. We then configured and integrated our device using this generated code for Python and finally sent it over to Bosch IoT Hub, which will then, since we have the asset communication subscription, bridge it into Bosch IoT Things. The last step was to use the Swagger UI of Bosch IT Things in order to validate our data and make sure that our data actually comes in. 
If you now want to go in and visualize the sensor data you just sent from your Raspberry Pi to the Bosch IoT suite, you can check out the other video about using the Voto dashboard in order to visualize sensor data.